Hey guys and welcome back to the practical and map guide. So in this video we are going to discuss how to discover hosts inside network. An important point important point that you need to remember is that we are going to perform this particular step only if you don't know that a, any host is up or running inside a network. And if you want to find whether any host is running inside a network, we are going to find it out using host discovery method. Remember that host discovery is kind of a black box texting because we are finding our victim inside a network. And if you already know the IP address that you're going to hack, then there's no need to perform host discovery. So that's the basic idea behind host discovery. So before I tell you more about host discovery, there is there are some, some stuff that you need to understand very well. That is one of them being the three-way handshake. Well, three-way handshake or the TCP handshake occurs when a client, on my left hand there's a client and on the right hand there's a server. So when a client wants to connect to the server, the client creates a TCP packet and inside that packet there, there are certain flags. It activates one flag known as the SYN flag. So when a client wants to connect to the server, it creates a packet and inside that packet the SYN flag is set to 1. Now the server receives this SYN flag and then creates a packet known as SYN ACK packet in which both the SYN flag and the ACK flag both of them are set to 1. So that's a way to say that hey I have received your request that's what the ACK flag ACK stands for acknowledgement so that was ACK and then since a connection is made on both sides like if the PC a connection is only made if both the side agrees. So when the PC wants to make a connection it sends the SYN flag and when the server wants to connect back now it will also has to activate the SYN flag. That is why both SYN and ACK are activated. Now since the PC receives the SYN flag activated now it has to respond that hey I have received your SYN ACK flag. As a result it sends back the ACK. Let's go back again and let's 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 repeat it again so that we can understand it much better. So if a client or PC wants to connect to the server, it will first send a TCP packet with SYN flag set to 1. That's the way to say, hey, I want to connect to you. That's the way to say to the server that, hey, I want to connect to you. Now, the server says, hey, I have received your flag. Now let me connect back to you. That's why it sends the SYN and the ACK flag, it sets both to 1 and the rest of the flag, there are many flags, it's SYN and ACK are one of them. So there are many flags and only SYN and ACK are set to 1. Now since the PC or the client has received the SYN and ACK flag, uh, it has to send back the acknowledgement hence, and hence it sends back the ACK flag set to 1. So that is the three-way handshake and in all of them a TCP packet is generated. So let's look at the architecture of a TCP packet. So this is how a TCP header looks like. And if you look right over here, these are the flags. These are binaries. This is only one. These all take one bits. So this is the fin flag stands for finish. This is the sin. This is the one which is uh, kept to one while make initiating a connection. This can be either zero or one. These all flags can be either zero or one. So when you're making a connection, you keep the sin flag as one. And when the server responds back, it keeps both SYN and ACK flag as one in a way to say, hey, I have received your connection. Now let me connect back to you. And when the client received both SYN and ACK flag, it responds with the ACK flag set to one. And the rest of them are all zero. If you want, you can learn more about all these flags. It's pretty much easy to understand. Just Google it. As I already say, if you don't understand some stuff, make sure to Google it until and unless you understand it properly. So, yeah, since we know that we are performing host discovery in order to identify whether there are any host person inside the network. But what if we already know? Well, Nmap by default performs a host discovery. And if you want to disable, then you can just use the hyphen PN flag to disable host discovery. Or if you want to directly skip this step, then you have to perform the hyphen SL. I mean, type in the hyphen SL flag. Now let's start our host discovery scan methods. The first one being the ping scan. 
let's go back to our parrot operating system and then identify or try to find out how this works let me open up the terminal and then give it administrative access that is sudo su and then i'll type the password okay now let me just zoom it a bit so it's clear to see and i have also run my metasploitable 2 in the background let me log into it again all right let me clear that if config because we need the ip address all right it's 10.0.2.7 okay now let's begin so the first one we were discussing was the ping scan right yeah the ping scan so in order to perform the ping scan we need to set the hyphen sn flag so let's do it if i type n mass space hyphen s n and then 10.0.2.7 and then hyphen vv it will perform the ping scan as you can see here and then it will respond whether this host is up or not in the end as you see nmap done one ip address and the host is up so that's a way to identify that this particular host is up and running so what if i perform uh, what if i give a range and we all know how to give it the range let's give it like star right and i will remove the hyphen vv flag because it's gonna take a like the space it is gonna take a lot of space so what do you think it's gonna scan the previous to previous video i have discussed what the star means so in this scan it's gonna perform the ping scan just checks whether the host is up or not to what all ip address it's 10.0.2.0 all the way up to 10.0.2.255 so when i hit enter it's gonna perform the scan for all of them wow that was really pretty quick isn't it see it has scanned 256 ip addresses but only five hosts are up so they are 10.0.2.6 10.0.2.7 2.3 2.2 and 2.1 that was really cool so uh, let me tell you one more stuff if you want to scan the whole internet i would suggest you to do this one this particular activity this is really cool this will actually tell you what all devices are currently active in the entire internet and let me tell you it's gonna be a really huge 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 process and it's gonna take a lot of time so if you feel like if you feel lucky someday and if you feel like you can donate like a lot of time to this then perform this and you will get back a ton of ip address which are active in the entire internet so what this scan actually does is basically it sends a ping request to an ip to the ip address like it sends this ping 10.0.2.7 and if it responds back then it cancels the ping and then gives you and tells you that the host is up pretty simple so that's what ping does uh, let me go back to the ppt so that was ping scan and the major stuff important thing to make note that when we perform the ping scan it did not perform the port scan it just checked whether the host was up and if the host was up it skips the port scanning and gives you the result back okay now let's move on to some complex host discovery scanning and now this is known as tcp syn ping before we dive deep into what understanding what how tcp syn ping works let's just perform tcp syn ping and after that we'll come and discuss how it works so the flag that we use for tcp syn ping is hyphen ps and there's you can also mention the port number or port numbers i have given some example this hyphen ps 80 will scan only for port 80 and this will scan a range from 32 to 35 or and 80 80 80 and 95 so you can mention port numbers if you don't mention the port numbers then this since this the tcp syn ping will scan the top thousand common ports all right let's go back and then scan nmap then we'll scan our metasploitable vulnerable machine 10.7 and we'll set the flag hyphen ps and we won't mention anything because let, let let it scan all the top thousand common ports and let's hit enter 
as you can see that was pretty quick it used the tcp sin ping to scan for the host in our case 10.0.2.7 and then it scanned for the ports and gave me the results and these are the services that are running on these ports and if you want to see the version number which version is running well that's we'll keep it for some other slide let's go back now let's just understand how this particular host discovery worked what can you see the difference in tcp sin ping than the normal three-way handshake we saw in the previous to previous slide exactly the last flag is not ACK but rather a reset flag known as RST so let's just understand what is going on so our end map on the left hand side is our end map and it sends a connection asking for connection to the host in our case is our metasploitable vulnerable machine so our end map sends a sin packet asking for connection for our metasploitable which is on the right hand side now the metasploitable 2 says hey you can connect back to me now let me connect back to you that is what the second one sin act flag does now what we are going to do end map sends the packet reset implies i want to disconnect i just don't want to connect to you that's what the rst stands for that's how you terminate a connection so in layman's term let's just understand this with a in a, in a fun way suppose i am end map and you are metasploitable or any other host in a network and i come to you and ring the doorbell now you come and open the door and there is nothing there's no one standing in there it's just like a runaway bell well that's what sin ping does and this is known this is also known as a stealth ping technique well nowadays it's not as stealthy but still it's widely used and it is the default way nmap uses to find hosts in a network let me clear the screen all right so i hope i made myself clear by explaining this now let's move to udp ping all right till now we were dealing with tcp now if you are interested in finding a udp host udp stands for user data diagram protocol so if you are interested in using udp ping you can go ahead and use this udp ping scanning but let me tell you into uh, like in if you're scanning for active hosts then i don't think you're gonna need this udp ping because most of the hosts use tcp and udp is majorly used in broadcasting where there is like in streaming web and where speed matters and security does not matter and in today's world packet security and loss we take into consideration it a lot so we don't um, majority of the interesting hosts that interesting hosts will never use udp udp rather use tcp so there is no need to perform udp on any host but it's really important to understand that such a ping exists such as, such as host discovery technique exists now let's come to the final topic which is icmp uh, icmp echo and this is very rarely used and but it's a great idea to actually you know it, it's nice to know a little bit about other scanning techniques so this will also try, try to identify a host present inside a network and if previous one does not work try using this one maybe it will give you results who knows so folks that was all about host discovery now we will move to port scanning in the next video and this one is all about scanning ports and identifying services on the ports it's gonna be too awesome let's begin on the next video until then goodbye